Hello, I'd like to start by uh, briefly going over the outline of what will be reviewed today. Uh, the presentation is divided into sections that will describe R&D activities and methods, project management activities, and some other disciplines that add value to the project management methods for R&D. Then we'll take a look at how to methodically and effectively apply these methods to R&D projects. And finally, we'll review some of the other important considerations and summarize the main messages from the presentation. During this webinar, we're going to uh, review underlying principles and components that make up R&D activities and methods. We'll be reviewing enabling application of disciplined approaches to R&D. And specifically, we'll focus on some key process areas for R&D, such as measurements, risk, and, and teaming activities. The terms research and development um, in many organizations are interpreted in different ways. And really there are established definitions as to what falls in the category, uh, categories of R&D and specifically what does not. In particular, there's a body of knowledge that's compiled annually by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's known as the Frascati Manual, and it carefully and clearly outlines what is in and what is not part of R&D. It's used to compile statistics on global R&D and innovation activities, so the definitions are really solid and consistent. The table resource provides guidance as to how uh, the world views each of these categories of effort, and this is important because as you're going through this activity and trying to understand how to apply uh, project management methods, it's good to know that your definition of, pro of research and development is consistent with the global sort of standard definitions. So some of the activities typically referred to as R&D would, would be things like developing new products, components, material systems, uh, even processes and services. R&D involves systematic work in a new area using unique ideas that are both novel and have uncertain outcomes. Generally, there's an expected science, technical, social, or, or business benefit from the R&D. So in this section, I'm going to discuss the general phases of R&D, R&D attributes, and the application of, of the life cycle approach. The Scotty Manual notes that Captured within the categories of the terms R&D are basic and applied research, development, demonstration, validation, engineering, manufacturing development, and operational systems development. Although it can be difficult to determine where the borders are between research and development per se, there is a, a continuum of work that's performed within these descriptions. The earlier in the development phase an activity is, the less is really known about how to accomplish the change that is desired, and the later in the development phase, the closer it is to implementation readiness. This is a representation of that progression, and, and although there's a linearity shown in the figure, the progression of R&D is really not linear. Uh, for example, an activity may start in the applied research and move into early development, or a basic research activity may begin and end within that category without ever moving into the next category. So it's possible to start in basic research and move through all the way into late development and then loop back into an earlier phase if an experiment or prototype does not actually perform as planned. And there's a relative synergistic relationship where results sort of drive the progression. Basic research is sometimes referred to as theoretical or fundamental research. Its objective is the acquisition of new knowledge without a real uh, defined goal or expected application of that knowledge. Typically, basic research includes activities such as developing a hypothesis, uh, developing theories or ideas. And when you get into the oriented or applied or directed research, it's, it's really more expected to produce produce knowledge that will serve as a back background material for future applied research and, and eventual development activities. Applied research really aims to gain knowledge to address a known need, technical, or scientific goal. And it includes activities like investigations, prototyping, and, and experimentation. Common is the activity of taking the idea and evolving it until it is a workable solution or product. Development can include processes as well as, pro as, well as products, and, it, and its activities are things such as integration, risk reduction, test, verification, validation. The purpose of breaking development down further into early, late, and pre-production is to show the progression um, experienced through systematic risk reduction as the development moves 
to a more stable and repeatable product or process that will ultimately transition into production or operations environments. So at that point, this model shows the attributes of an activity and where it falls within uh, the R&D life cycle. So to use the model, you would determine the level, for example, uh, going around the outside of the box, you would uh, determine the level of creativity needed and the number of required expected iterations, the level of expected change, and the expected outcomes. And um, so you would use that box to kind of walk around and see where, where you think your activity falls within that. So if there's a high level of creativity needed, for example, and a high number of expected iterations and change, an unknown expected outcome, then you're probably up around the basic to applied research levels. Have, um, if you have an established architecture with little creativity needed to move forward in your particular project, you don't expect a lot of iterations, you don't expect a lot of change, and you kind of know what you're going to get out of it. So, for example, maybe you're just investigating an upgrade with a known technology, then the life cycle is probably more stable and, and more toward, you're going to find that you're more towards the production end of this realm than the basic research. This model gives you the ability to categorize your R&D activity, which will become more important as you determine the appropriate level of project management to apply to these activities. Organizations that support R&D activities typically do so because it fits into their overall company strategy. So to understand where R&D fits into the overarching set of activities, within an organization and, and thereby really understand what kind of management structure you want to apply, it, it's good to know what the organizational strategy is, what, uh, what portfolio the project sits in, if, if it does sit within a portfolio, and what program contains that project, again, if there is one. And most importantly, where the R&D is in its life cycle. So a life cycle is an end-to-end -end look or systemic view of how an activity evolves over time and it can be used to facilitate decisions on when to invest in new technology that will either replace or rejuvenate existing capability. And it has phases that uh, provide structure and a focus. So having a background on the structure surrounding the activity and a perspective on what is driving the initiatives, what other uh, projects might be interconnected or dependent on the R&D, and what outcomes you're desiring from that activity helps provide the context for the application of project management that we're going to get into in a little bit. So the diagram on the left demonstrates a strategic plan and initiatives feeding into a portfolio of activities. And within that portfolio is a program, a project, and some strategic R&D. And traditionally what we see in program management and, and project management at these levels is, is some defined methodology that applies very well to those. So your standard project management methodology will be used for uh, your typical projects that fall into this. However, the R&D projects, as you see, they're integrated and yet um, people struggle with applying project management methodology to, to those activities. So um, within the organizational portfolio, R&D activity can also be either incremental or radical in nature. And incremental, it really is pushing the current capability to a new level, so using small changes along an existing trajectory. Um, the radical R&D looks to develop an enhancement or something outside a known technological capability or outside what you're already doing. It's significantly different in approach and typically has different, uh, dramatically different results. And sometimes those results actually might be detrimental to an existing uh, trajectory or capability that you have in your organization. So incremental.